Hi, and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam, and this is the Crafty Blinder van build. And today, I'm installing my 12 volt system. <laughs> Sun shining, what a rarity. Welcome back to the channel. Um, in today's video, we're going to be talking about this our electrical system um, minefield that's all I'm going to say minefield um, you can sit and watch as many videos as you want but at the end of the day the decision comes down to yourself what are you going to put in how are you going to power it how are you going to recharge it how are you going to store your energy all them questions there's only you going to answer unless you pay somebody else to do it so for you guys that are having a go, um, well done, but just please do your research, especially with the 230 stuff, you know, make sure you're not making your van into a death trap. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, I strongly recommend that you get somebody, a professional to do it for you, even the 12 volt stuff, you know, if, if you if you believe you're more than capable to do it, crack on, have a go. But, you know, do your research, do your homework, understand how things work and and do it safely. And that's the main thing. Do everything you can yourself, but do it safely. If there's an area you don't understand, please get somebody who has experience and knowledge and as a professional, in all honesty, to to check it out for you. Today's video is about my 12 volt system and how we installed it. Because we've just come back. This is a rare sight. This is Mark Foster cleaning windows, actually working for a living. <laughs> <laughs> the sun's out. Look, the sun's out and Mark's out. Usually he'd be sunned off by now. I will be after I've done yours. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's who interrupted our video. When I got to this point in the van build, I still didn't know what electrical systems I wanted in my van or what equipment I wanted in my van. And I paid the price later because I had to make penetrations in the vapour barrier and then seal them back up, run ducts through and get cables to places that were pretty much inaccessible. I would suggest that if you know where your shower's going to go or you know where your galley, your kitchen's going to go, install containment that will allow you to pull some cables through if you need to or if you change your mind later on and this will avoid the problems that I had. One thing you need to really consider is when you're doing your electrics you'll maybe do 10 different designs and you'll settle with one but that design must still be fluid it must be able to change and adapt as you discover clashes and discrepancies and, and what have you so I've watched a lot of videos where people run cables in the strengthening parts of the chassis and I, I don't agree with that I think you know the amount of equipment that you will mount and sorry amount of materials that you will mount on into that area using screws and other fixings there's a potential that you're going to strike a cable and for me as an electrical engineer I can't have that so I've surface mounted everything Every one of my cables will be accessible if something goes wrong. The duct for extra protection. So if I need to pull this cable back, it won't be an issue. Some of them I've eased into, I don't know if you can see that. I've eased them into the insulation, so they're still accessible. So when the, when the roof panel's up, I'll still be able to make adjustments and repairs. And if something happens to the cable, it breaks or we do have the unfortunate cable strike, we can deal with it. Um, but when you hide them in the panels, over years as well, where they rub together, they can short through to the metalwork, no problem at all. 
you put them in a plastic duct they're not chopped anywhere they stay insulated treble insulated <laughs> if, you've, if you've used the correct cables but yeah I uh, I've designed this van in such a way that if anything ever does break or a cable becomes damaged or an appliance gives up the ghost we can come in we can strip out basically back to the f substrate of the van and and crack on and change things even the roof panels I'll be able to you'll be able to remove them there won't be you won't see fixings on them I'm gonna do hidden fixes I'm using this fantastic velcro tape as well to hold the centers of the of the uh, roof panels up on the spars it's really good stuff but um just thinking about how you're gonna repair it in the future you know putting that little bit of time and effort in for some people it doesn't really matter they're not bothered just want to get on but I kind of need the security and peace of mind that I can fix things if something goes wrong or as technology changes I might be able to add a new bit of kit to my van that I've wanted and without having to strip half the van to pieces I'll just be able to fire along a cable run or through a duct to get it to where it needs to be but putting that little bit of time in now will save me a lot of time later so this cup X is from flexible conduit is from screw fix so I always leave like a little loop so you're not struggling so if you ever have to change this fan it'll be easy enough to do you won't be wishing you'd left lots of cable lying on so just get a couple of bits of tape first just to secure it this tape's fantastic it's really strong and I don't know enjoy putting it on when you're taping up your conduit don't you don't do what I've done here and put cables in it already. It just adds to the weight and it makes it a little bit more difficult to get the conduit to stick and sit where you want it. of them to do. Um, you can see it's up there, ends a bit loose but let me put a little bit more tape around it. You don't want that coming away. Now we're driving, becoming one of them light rattles that you can never deal with again. So good. So now I'll just feed this cable all the way along. So this is going to be the last light in the circuit it's going to be right above the back door um, I'm probably going to do with this this light here um, the only reason I've left it is it controls the lights as you open the doors as well disconnected it stops them working so I may, I may just take the lamp out of that I don't know yet I'll have to think um, maybe even put an LED in it I'm not sure I'll have a think about that for equipment that I may need to change out at some point due to failure or maybe to maintain I've installed automotive cable clips on them just for that extra bit of convenience where I can unclip them and do what I need to do and then put them back together it saves me cutting or disconnecting cables as for all the other connections I just use standard spare connectors they're proven they're easily found and 
quickly changed out if you have a problem. As you progress through your build, you'll realise that you have to finish certain parts before you can move on to the next part. So the main part of my build, for me to complete, was the ceiling. It had quite a lot of conduit and ducts and electrical systems up there that needed power. Once it was done, I utilised them. On the hot days I had the fans on, on the dark days I had the lights on. And it proved invaluable. It was quite a milestone in the van build to have the ceiling in, so I was very eager to get the lights put in. On the back of the downlighters, I've attached a cable tie sticky pad, and this is just to hold the cables in place. Once you've made the connections, they would be free behind the ceiling board and could potentially rattle and, and, and cause you a bit of irritation as you're driving, and this takes care of that. It's then just a matter of trimming the end off the tie and popping the light into place. <laughs> That's nearly all the ceiling done. Fans are in, lights are in, cable ducts for anything I need to run around, the 4G and TV aerial, the shower fan and light, they're both on the same circuit so as you would at home, turn the light on, the fan comes on. We'll keep that, um, we're going to switch that from the outside so I'm going to keep that as traditional as you would expect at home. This bit of panel's missing, um, I haven't put that in yet, as I have a, another cable entry point to put on the roof, so I'm going to put, put that in the corner. All cables are hidden behind that panel, and back to the fuse board. So, I'm just about finished the ceiling. Let me start with the internals. Quite happy with how this section here has turned out. We used the original cable tidy above the door. Um, I'm maybe going to stick a couple of little downlighters in there that will come on with the door when you open it, just to give you a little bit, little bit of light while you access. And again, with that trim to put in there, the roof trim to put in there, and that's that section finished as well. The power for my 12 volt system comes from these two AGMs. Um, they're both 100 amp and they're powered by solar, sorry, recharged by solar by the alternator. And we've also got a battery charger on the system. This bit needs tidied up, I only put it in a few days ago. But that will top us up while we're on club sites and we're plugged into the mains at home. Let me just show you what we've got down here. This is our 50 amp breaker that supplies our fuse board. 16 mil cable that runs up to the fuse board. And that's basically running containment down there, over here up behind this panel and across in this cable tidy and there it shows up again so let's just go over what we've done we have auto cable supplying nearly all the circuits and that basically will carry 16 amps that cable um, we're protecting the cable by these fuses and that is their purpose really, to protect the cables. Um, you can fuse these accordingly to protect the devices. But something you should remember, that'll carry 16 amps, so 
really the maximum fuse you should be putting in is 15. Now you can buy this cable in different sizes, but I've used 16 amp, so the biggest fuse I'm going to need is 15. So I've assessed all the appliances that I've put on and all the circuits that have ran into the van and the biggest one I'll have in is 15. Now that supplies um, USB ports. They're all individually fused. So they have fast blow fuses at that at the other end. So that is solely to protect this cable. We have some white cable here, which is one mil. Um, and this here is what I used on all my lighting circuits. It basically carries up to um, eight amps and is ideal for what I want. I've, I've used a bit down here as well. That's the igniter. Um, what else have I used? The only other thing here, that's a data cable that goes back to the inverter. So don't worry about that. But yeah, lighting circuit and um, igniter circuit. They're the only two different things that I've got in there. What else is here? Yeah. Oh yeah, this is this is just a, a USB as well. It's singly insulated 12 volt, but it's it's behind this panel and it's going to be behind another panel. So I'm not really worried about that. To finish off the installation as well, I've put some inch and a half um, containment in, some trunking, and I think that just tidies everything up. And I've done that right through the van, through all the lockers. But I can still get to every cable. I can make changes if I need to. But I'm happy. I'm really happy that that job's finished. <laughs> anyway, let's shut the door on it. That's how we install our 12 volt system. Thank you again for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you've liked the video, share it with your friends. And if you want to follow us, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and we post on there regular. Thanks again for watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>